Hey everybody, World War Guy here today, and as promised, I have the video for the personal items that a Belgian soldier could slash would have carried during the 18 days campaign. Now, as with the uniform, there are still many things that I'm missing, so it is not 100% complete, so please understand. With that being said, let's start with what I have. All right, to begin with the food. Soldiers have to eat, I like to eat, you like to eat, so it's good to have some food. First thing here is we have a can opener. Now this one is a German style, German army uh, issue one as far as I'm aware, uh, but this is still a period correct one. As there are no markings, I'm happy to use this. Then every soldier would have been issued a drinking cup. This one is actually a French made one, I believe. These are still issued to the Belgians. Here I just have a random can. I think this one's just like Vienna sausages. Uh, now this one's not very accurate as you have the ribs in the can and you also have this uh, pull tab to open it. So this is not accurate as it is, but soldiers would still have some canned food. Underneath that I just have a handmade bag. Uh, this would be a home item. You can store whatever you want in it. Random apple. Always good, gives you energy. This here, as far as I remember, is a sort of butter dish. Um, this is for kind of like your butter ration, your, your fat ration. Uh, that would be stored in there quite big, so I guess they plan for soldiers to have a lot of butter. And then we have the bread tin. This is actually called a bread tin, bread box. And this is the things you could have inside. It's just a simple aluminum box. Inside I just have a, a roll, some crackers from home, uh, some jars of uh, jam. Of course this one has uh, incorrect labels. But what we can do is you can always take off the labels and you have a pretty accurate uh, container. Of course, this one still has some print on it, but let's not look at that. Yeah, normally this would contain any sort of bread rations and any other food the soldier could and would fit in there. All right, moving on to hygiene. First, we have a standard issued water bucket. Uh, every soldier would be issued one of these. It's a canvas bucket, so to speak and you can literally fill it up with water. So this is great because you can empty it, fold it, put it in your havish sack, bread bag, whatever you'd like. And it holds water well enough to get your shaving done, wash your face, wash your feet, whatever you need to wash. Uh, and I'm sure when it was brand new, it held water a lot better. And then here we have the toiletry kit. Now, as I said, this is not complete, so there's definitely some things missing. First off, we have a simple Razor, this one's a modern made one, similar to the ones from the period, but it's still modern. You can still tell it's not very accurate. Next up here is we have a pair or a pack of razors. This one is a German post war one, I believe, but this still gives you the idea of something that Belgian soldiers could have. Soap wrapped in paper and twine. It's good to stay clean. Nivea cream, of course, this one's a modern one, so it's not entirely correct. But Nivea cream did exist back then, and of course the design would be slightly different, but it's good to have some lotion. Keep your hands uh, away from being dry so they don't crack and they don't hurt. Toothbrush, this one's a plastic one, period correct, but a lot of Belgian soldiers, you could see them with uh, wooden toothbrushes. This one is still correct. And of course, a shaving brush. It's good to uh, have this. Always need one. And of course, a towel, hand towel, this is good to clean your face off, clean your hands. It's, it's good to have a towel there, a clean one. And under that is a toiletry kit, or a toiletry roll I should say, where you'd place all your toiletries, shaving kit, uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, tooth powder, soap, anything like that, just roll it up in there. Now as you can see I am missing uh, toothpaste or tooth powder, I am missing shaving cream, um, and then maybe some other hygiene items that I'm just not thinking of. But of course, you can use your imagination. And then up here, continuing with the hygiene, we have a little pocket mirror. This one's a leather pouch that I made to protect the mirror. Oh. <laughs> um, this one's an American-made one. You can see a lot of European ones at the time were small circular ones that you could easily fit in your pocket, but this one's a little nice. You know, you can always imagine the soldier uh, Spend a little extra money for a nice mirror. And then here we have two handkerchiefs. 
This one's a new made one, just a plain white one. And this one's actually a vintage Italian one, I think, from like the 1960s. Uh, but the pattern is still the same as you could see in the 1930s and 40s. So it's pretty cool to have some variety. And then right here, we just have a typical brush, small brush. Every soldier was issued one of these actually. So it's important to have in your kit. I've even seen one original example where the soldier had his uh, unit marking as well as his uh, soldier serial number, ID number, etched into the, uh, the brush. So this is always good to have. Brush off your, your boots, your tunic, anything you need to brush something with. And then right here we have a formation manual. This one's a 1932 model, but they were used up, up until at least 1938. And I'm sure by 1940 they issued the exact same. Um, soldiers would most likely not carry this out to the field as by then they are trained and they know just about everything in that manual. Um, but it's still nice to have they could keep it at their barracks. Then here we have a wallet with a 100 Belgian franc bill. This one's from I think 1934. Um, of course this is the only bill I have. It is an original. Then here we have a wallet or a billfold, I should say. This one's the one from Hessian. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really like it. The leather is kind of crap. And uh, the staining or dyeing is like really poorly done. Uh, so eventually I think I'll just make my own slightly smaller one because this, uh, this one is quite large. I can only really fit it in one of my tunic pockets or two of them, I guess, the, the waist ones. By the way, it's good to have a wallet or a billfold so you can actually carry your money and any other personal paper items you would need to have. All right, moving up here, we have your ID booklet. Every soldier would have this. Uh, it'd have all your personal information in it. Uh, here we go. It would have your picture, your fingerprints. This I still need to fill out, but it has your uh, basically all your facial, facial features. Yeah, pretty detailed. And then here you'd have anything, any other information, your promotions, uh, family information, uh, if you've moved to a new location or a new household, it has uh, room for that. And then any sort of information a soldier would need to know. Yeah, every soldier would be issued this, so this is very important to have. And something I forgot to include in the video is the ID bracelet. Every soldier would be issued this, and I believe it would be worn on the right wrist. But on the bracelet, it would just include your last name and your first and middle initial. On the flip side, you would have your unit number, as well as your soldier's ID number. And here is another military ID card. This is a small one. Inside you would have your, all your name, uh, where you were born, birthday, everything like that. Your photo, and of course the stamp on there. This one you would also have on you, and it's very important to have. All right, and then up here we have a World War II 1934-39 uh, bandage. Every soldier would be issued this, and if I remember correctly, this would actually be placed in your greatcoat interior pocket and not on your tunic. Uh, as the Belgian army, normally similar to the French, would actually have their greatcoat even during the summer as their regular uniform. This would be in their greatcoat pocket. Otherwise, every soldier would also be issued this. Here we have a simple pocket knife. This is the, uh, those neat ones that fold up and lock close. This one is a modern one, so you do have some modern markings there, as well as on the blade. Uh, but otherwise, it's still very nice, and the style is accurate for the time period. Here we have a pipe. And I don't normally smoke, so I just have a, a vintage pipe. No tobacco or anything like that. But of course, soldiers, you'd see them smoking pipes, cigarettes, cigars. Probably not cigars, but could happen. And here just for fun, this would probably not, I don't think any soldier would necessarily have this, but uh, you just have a small Belgian flag. Why not? You, a little bit of patriotism. Here I have some simple wooden pencils. It's always good to write some, or have something to write with. And uh, these are actually the ones from Ikea. You can get those free ones that they have randomly placed. Just sand off their logo and they work pretty well basic pen pencils that you would see at the time period. And here is maybe a fantasy item. I don't know how many soldiers would actually have this with them out on the field and not kept at home. But this is actually a sort of souvenir photo booklet from a 
Bon Défi, Bon Défi, in Germany, and I, I think in English it's a Lake Constance. Check the bottom of the screen. But inside, but inside you'd have photos from Lake Constance. Uh, this is of the time period, I don't know when exactly, if it's the 1930s, 1940s, maybe 1950s, I'm not sure. Uh, but nonetheless, it is still accurate for this impression. But just not very likely that a Belgian soldier would have this on them. Maybe at home, maybe for a civilian impression, yes, but this we can argue it's sort of a fantasy item. And speaking of fantasy items, here are a pair of sunglasses. It was very rare for Belgian soldiers to have sunglasses. So again, this is a sort of fantasy item. Uh, I like to carry it because sunglasses are nice, but normally Belgian soldiers wouldn't carry sunglasses. It wasn't very common. Similar to the German army, American, French, etc. Sunglasses were not very common. And the last item is this uh, vintage pocket notebook. Uh, this one, I'm not sure if it's 40s, 30s, 50s, uh, but this is accurate. And, as with the pencils, it's always good to have something to write on. You can write personal notes, you can write information, uh, really anything you can write, it's always good to have, at least you have something to write on. All right, and that concludes the video for the personal items. I hope you guys enjoyed. I think it's, it's a pretty good setup, honestly. Some good items shown here today. <laughs> of course, I'm still missing some items you guys know. You guys saw what I was missing. I'm sure you can point it out. But otherwise, that concludes the video for today. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, write a comment, share, and subscribe. But besides that, you guys have a great day.